Wireless networks enable your wireless clients to access the internet. Once you set up a wireless network, your EAPs typically broadcast the network name, SSID, in the air, through which your wireless clients connect to the wireless network and access the internet. This video will guide you through creating wireless SSIDs for different users via the Omada controller. To access the wireless network, follow these steps to set up your host Wi-Fi. Launch your Omada controller and go to the Devices page. Adopt the devices to switch them to the Connected status. Go to Settings, Wireless Networks. Click Create New Wireless Network. A network name is required to identify the wireless network. Here we use Office as an example. You can choose EAP or Gateway to broadcast the network. Choose the bands in which the SSID will be broadcast. If the SSID needs to be broadcast in both the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands, we recommend going to Settings, Site, Services, Advanced Features to enable band steering and choose Prefer 5 GHz, 6 GHz mode. The 5 GHz and 6 GHz bands will provide a far better wireless experience than the 2.4 GHz band. For network security, different security modes are available. When choosing none, you can connect to the wireless network without any password. This mode usually works with portal authentication. WPA Personal is the most common mode, with which you need to set a password of at least 8 digits for the wireless network. PPSK allows you to assign different passphrases to different users or clients for easier management and higher security. With PPSK without radius enabled, you can create as many as 128 PPSKs in a PPSK profile and bind them to the wireless network. WPA Enterprise and PPSK with radius require a radius server to provide centralized authentication. Detailed instructions can be found in the user guide and another video. Here we choose WPA Personal as an example. Set the password. More settings for the wireless network can be done. For instance, in advanced settings, you will see SSID broadcast is enabled by default. When it is disabled, your wireless clients will be unable to discover the SSID, and you will need to manually add the SSID and password of the wireless network in your clients. If you enable VLAN, the clients will be connected to the corresponding VLAN that you have set. Make sure to set a different VLAN ID from that of the native network of the switch. The VLAN ID and the native network LAN of the switch is 1 by default. If you also set VLAN 1 here, the clients may fail to access the network. In advanced settings, you can also choose different WPA modes. WPA2 PSK, WPA3 SAE is currently the most advanced Wi-Fi encryption, but it may not be supported by some legacy clients. If some of your IoT clients fail to connect to the Wi-Fi, try to switch the WPA mode to WPA, WPA2 PSK, or even WPA PSK AES. 802.11R allows faster roaming when both the AP and client support 802.11R. Rate limit can also be configured here. Client rate limit helps limit the upload and or download rates of each client to balance bandwidth usage. SSID rate limit helps limit the total upload and or download rates of all clients connected to the same SSID of the same AP. You can conduct different settings depending on different scenarios. Further explanations for rate limit will be provided later in this video. By enabling WLAN schedule, you can set schedules for the wireless network based on your own needs. For more information on WLAN schedule, please refer to this video. In 802.11 rate control, you can enable or disable minimum data rate control for different bands. Disabling lower bit rates can improve performance for higher density networks, but will make some older devices incompatible with your networks as well as limiting the range of your wireless network. By enabling MAC filter, you can allow or block connections from wireless clients of specific MAC addresses. For instance, you can add all the legal clients in the office to the allow list so as to avoid private or illegal connections. 
In multicast broadcast management, you can enable different two unicast conversions, after which Obata EAPs will convert multicast packets into unicast ones. Large multicast and broadcast traffic may lower the throughput of the wireless network. If you are not familiar with networking, just keep the default settings. After all the settings, click Apply. You will see a new wireless network added under the WLAN group. If you want to provide limited internet connections for your guests, here is the recommended configuration process. Go to Settings, Wireless Networks. Click Create New Wireless Network. Create a new SSID named Office Guest, for example, and enter a password. Find Guest Network and click Enable. With Guest Network enabled, clients connected to the guest network will be blocked from reaching any private IP subnet and can access the internet only. Set other parameters based on your own needs. Here we keep them by default. Click Apply. By setting rate limit, you can limit the download and upload rates of the guest network. Go to Settings, Profiles, Rate Limit. There is already a default profile with unlimited rates. Click Create New Rate Limit Profile. Enter the name to identify the profile. Enable both Download Limit and Upload Limit and set the corresponding rates. For example, 1000 kilobits per second for downloads and 500 kilobits per second for uploads. Click Apply. Go to Settings, Wireless Networks, and find the SSID Office Guest you have created. Click the Edit icon. Click Advanced Settings and find Rate Limit. You can use the default profile or choose a profile you have already created. By choosing Custom, you can set the download and upload limits here for the guest network. Here we use the rate limit profile just created for the client rate limit. Meanwhile, customize the SSID rate limit here with 10 megabits per second for downloads and 5 megabits per second for uploads. Click Apply. You will see that the SSID Office Guest with Guest Network and Rate Limit enabled has been created under the WLAN group. Now you have SSIDs for different users. Let's run some tests to see the differences. Step 1. Connect your mobile phone to the SSID Office and get the IP address. Step 2. Use a speed test tool to check the download and upload rates. You are supposed to receive unlimited speeds, depending on your actual speed from your ISP. Step 3. Ping the IP address of LAN devices, such as the IP address of the switch. This ping test is supposed to be successful. Step 1. Connect your mobile phone to the SSID office guest and get the IP address. Step 2. Use a speed test tool to check the download and upload rates, which will be limited to the value you have set in the rate limit profile. Step 3. Ping the IP address of LAN devices, such as the IP address of the switch. This ping test is supposed to fail. 